What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. And Wizards of the Coast went ahead and sent out a tweet today, Wednesday, when we usually film these, when the Magic Story usually comes out. Uh, and they did that specifically, seemingly, to make me a liar. Last week on this show, I said that we would not have a show right before the new year of 2016, and then Wizards sent out a tweet, and they asked what everyone's favorite top three, for example, uh, story moments of 2016 were for Magic the Gathering. Well, we have a review show, and I don't like to do anything small, so we decided, we came together, Amy and I, and we instead made a top ten and we decided to do the top 10 stories from this year. We also added in our top three worst stories because that's what you do. Um, we didn't necessarily have 10, but we did have three that stood out. Uh, if you've been following our show throughout, you'll probably will not be surprised by a lot of these right. because we did yeah. not, I mean, we reviewed them, right? We didn't uh, make our opinions hidden in any way. But what we'll also, um, I'm going to be doing when I put up this video is I'm going to try to annotate uh, either through the cards at the top or um, in annotations somewhere on the screen. I'm going to try to give you guys a link to our reviews of these stories. Maybe I'll put the annotations over Chandra's face over here. So as I mention uh, a story in the top 10, I'm not going to do it for the worst ones or the honorable mentions, but you are welcome to look for those on our channel. You can click that button down below and you'll, you'll see them all. So, um, But we are actually going to start, before we get into the actual top 10 list, with just some honorable mentions. It was very difficult for us to boil down all of these stories into the top 10. It uh, took a lot of time. Yes, and again, just because as any top 10 list here on YouTube, you will hear it. These are our opinions. And in fact, we want to hear your opinions. We'll yeah. mention it again at the end. But let us know As always. in the comments down below or on Facebook and Twitter what you think, whether you agree with us, disagree with us. Did we have some that were the same as yours? Do you think that we were wrong on some things, either in the worst, in the best, in the honorable mentions? Let us know. Did we forget one? Exactly. Did we snub any? Your, your favorite. Was it on the list? And why? Of course, why? Because yes. we'll be talking about that as well. But in our honorable mentions, because again, we couldn't get them all in here and I'm sure we still will miss some. Uh, the first one that we have here is from Shadows Over Innistrad, the story Sacrifice by Michael Yi Chow. Uh, this is the Gitrog story. If you watched our videos, you know Amy especially loves the Gitrog story. Yes. I enjoyed it as well. Um, it definitely, like like you can tell, is clearly, in my opinion, not in the top ten. But it was really good. Uh, it, it, it was a minor card, right? It's just a random mythic, and it could have just been a random monster, and it didn't need its own story. But when you read it, it was really interesting. It got to show the madness on Innistrad not necessarily related to Avacyn or Jace or Liliana. You didn't need any main characters at all in that story. It stood on its own. It was fun. Yes. It was light. It moved quickly. Yes. And you got to see a world, you know, see the, the world and all of its craziness without having to be anchored with a main character. Right. So, it was just a great story. Um, as you've noticed, we're going to be mentioning the authors. That is something that we got to love this year, are learning about all of these authors and seeing the threads between all of their stories. These people have done an amazing job. Um, and for the top three worst, we are not going to mention the authors because we're not trying to say that these people stunk at writing their stories. Uh, that is not the case. We're just giving our opinions, and so we're not trying to throw anybody under the bus. But for the honorable mentions in the top ten, these authors specifically, and really all of the Magic Story team, because they come together and write these beforehand, deserve praise for them. So we wanted to bring their names up. Second honorable mention would be, from Shadows of Innistrad again, is the Drownyard Temple story, and that is by Mel Lee. Uh... This one was, was more on Amy's list. We, we created our own list and, and blended them together. Not that I dislike this story by any means, but uh, if you want to talk about Jace going crazy and why you liked that so much. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm crazy, and it sounded like my own inner dialogue. <laughs> 
Uh, I liked that Jace talked to a book a lot in this story. It was hilarious. And it, it really, it really did... When we were reading this story, many times the two of us looked at each other and we were like, what is going on? <laughs> because it just was so outlandish and so crazy, which is exactly what it was going for. And so mission accomplished. Great job. Yeah. Um, after that, we have, and it's going to be the only time you're going to hear me say this today. Actually, I lied to you. Well, we'll get to the worst ones. But in, in positive discussion, <laughs> the only time we'll mention this day, from Conspiracy Take the Crown... We have Tyrants by Allison Lures. Yes. Uh, again, more so on Amy's list than mine, but I didn't dislike it by any means. Uh, this was the story of uh, following Captain Adriana, where we find out about the death of Brago. Yes. Uh, and the kind of Queen Marchesa taking over, and the fact that it seemingly was everyone against. Uh, uh, Brago and Captain Adriana yeah. just came out of nowhere. So, I mean, again, I don't know if you want to... I just really liked Queen Marchesa and just the characterization of her and just how they showed all of the... Um, just the... how entrenched her power was from the get-go. And her influence, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, again, we'll talk about Conspiracy to Take the Crown a little bit later. Uh, from Kaladesh, uh, we have the story A Time for Innovation by Kimberly Krynas. We both love Kimberly. We've talked about that many times. An amazing author. A Time for Innovation, we actually just recently reviewed the breakthrough story, which follows Rashmi, which was also written by Kimberly. But this one, A Time for Innovation, it was our first introduction to Kaladesh as a world it was without any of the main Gatewatch characters. We got to meet Rashmi. We got to see her working. And for me personally, um, I really appreciated the mystery and the, the tension in this story. Because the whole time you're thinking, oh my God, is she going to complete this in time? <laughs> Every turn that she made, something went wrong. Everything was getting thrown in her way. And then she persevered and it worked. And so you were super happy. And then something else was thrown in her path that made it seem literally impossible. And it just was up and down throughout the entire story. And while I was a little upset that my emotions were being toyed with that way, I, of course, by the end of it, loved it because of where it took me throughout reading it. And of course the supporting characters in that story were great too. My tool, of course. Sahili Rai. Sahili Rai. Yes, absolutely incredible. And again, great introductions to a world that we've never been on before. Yes. Characters that we've never met. Uh, and, and by the end of the story, you are in love with those characters. Correct. Correct. So those were our honorable mentions to get into the top ten itself. We start with number ten. From Shadows Over Innistrad, we have Unwelcome by Kelly Diggs. This is one of the first stories that we reviewed in JAR. Uh, it's, in fact, the third that we reviewed, but it was one of the first ones that we reviewed in JAR, and it followed Jace and Liliana. It followed Jace meeting Liliana in her home on Innistrad. Um, we had to put it on the list because I'm obsessed with it. Because they're exes. And because... Watch the jar. <laughs> be, right. And because I have said many times that my favorite part of these stories is the interactions between the Gatewatch. Technically, at the time, we didn't know that Liliana was going to join because this was Shadows, not Eldritch Moon. Right. So Oath of Liliana hadn't really been spoiled yet. You could have guessed it, but still. Um, it was nice to see these two interacting. It was such a snarky interaction, but it was such a heated interaction at the same yes, time. Yes, very passion-filled banter. Yes. For sure. And it was a relatively shorter story, if I remember correctly, and yet it didn't matter because so much got accomplished by the end of it that you felt fulfilled just as if it were a very long story. Yes. So that was number 10. Number nine, also from Shadows Over Innistrad, we've mentioned that a lot recently, <laughs> you'll see a pattern. This story was Games by Allison Lures. This one was more so me than Amy, but I loved Games. I loved this story so much. 
It was Gisa and Giralf. It was their introduction for this set, not in general, but for this set, it was their introduction. They were mentioned in many different cards in Shadows Over Innistrad before we even knew that they were getting their own card in Eldritch Moon. Right. But this story was so outside the box from any other story that we'd seen in Shadows Over Innistrad, in Oath of the Gatewatch, in Battle for Zendikar, anything. Because it was told solely through letters between the two. And it worked so well. It really did, because when you say that, it almost makes it seem like, oh, well, that's probably going to be kind of boring. It wasn't. No, it, it was not. great. Um, and it, I don't know. I, I, there's just a lot you can say about that story. Well, I was going to say, as again, I mentioned this in the video itself, there was more than just Amy and I reviewing it. So again, if it's still up here on Chandra's face, you can go click that and go watch it. But I was the only person who was reviewing that story out of the six people that were sitting there, five, whatever, uh, who didn't have a sibling. And yet, reading this story, I can understand that that's how siblings are. And everybody seemed to agree, which means that, there you go, um, that it very perfectly portrayed siblings. And siblings communicating with one another, they, they love each other, they support each other, they're mad at each other, they hate each other. It's the whole gamut and array of emotions. Um, so there you go. I, I appreciated being able to look into these two siblings and kind of seeing their story culminate in Eldritch Moon without a story was a little upsetting to me, but their yeah. card and the cards, the flavor text of some of the cards helped to draw that a little bit to a close for me. Definitely something I would have liked to see more of, but still. Again, I think we'll... That's probably one of the things that if, I shouldn't say if, because it's more like when we revisit Innistrad, they will be characters again. I we hope so. We will see them again. Right, because they were fan favorites the first time, uh, and so, yeah, we will hopefully see them again. But again, Games by Allison Lores, I, I loved it. It's, it's our number nine. Number eight. Moving away from Shadows Over Innistrad, but not too far, we go to Eldritch Moon. And in Eldritch Moon, we go to the Battle of Thraven, Thray Bin by Nick Davidson. This was the Gatewatch, all of the Gatewatch, minus Liliana, because she wasn't technically in it yet, yeah. finally getting to Innistrad. And they said, look, we just killed two Eldrazi Titans. We're the best. Who cares? Sorry. Let's just take down this Eldrazi, because whatever. Nissa, Chandra, yeah, Nissa, Chandra, do your thing, combine your powers, kill them, and we can all go home. And that's not at all what happened. <laughs> uh, and in fact, then your favorite part of the story is your girl came in on her, ironically, on her white horse, I guess. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, what, what did you think? I know that this yeah, was I mean, high on your list. Yeah, I mean, for me, this story was really great got to see Liliana kick ass, which I think is something that not only me, but a lot of fans of the story were waiting for and hoping for. Um, maybe even in Shadows Over Innistrad, but it, it finally happened in Eldritch Moon with this story. Right, and, and I mean... And she came in and saved everybody's asses. Yeah. Because um, they were getting it handed to them. Exactly. So that was fantastic. Um, and again, that is why our number eight is the Battle of Thraven from Eldritch Moon. Number seven, back to Shadows Over Innistrad, <laughs> we have Promises Old and New by Ari Levitch. Uh, this was... Nihirian Soren's first introduction in this story, in the Shadows Over Innistrad story, uh, it was from Soren's perspective. You got to see his interaction with Nihiri from his perspective, from the past, where he meets her at the Hell Vault. She shows up. She says, where have you been? Look at what's been happening on Zendikar. I called for your help. Soren's response was, hey, guess what? I'm dealing with stuff on Innistrad. I don't really care, and... So too bad, so sad. <laughs> and the Eldrazi aren't a threat to us because I've protected my plane from them, and I don't really care about yours. And 
I know for you, I mean... That was a deal breaker. <laughs> I just, I hate Soren. That's just how it's going to be now. Yep. Forever. Right. And we'll get to it later, but uh, we see how he gets his comeuppance. Um, but no, it, <laughs> but, I mean... I mean, it's also pretty obvious if you've seen any of our other jars that... I love Zendikar as a plane. I'm obsessed with Nyssa, who is basically best friends one with Zendikar. With Zendikar. <laughs> yep. Um, so I mean, if uh, if some vampire dude's gonna come up here and start saying how useless the plane is, I'm gonna start saying how useless he is. <laughs> And, and that he should just die. Well, and it was, you know, to see the two of them actually fight and, and to go from calm and Nahiri was actually super happy to see him to her kind of realizing what was going on and, and Soren kind of, it was from his perspective and he was kind of just aware of the fact that in his mind it was super inconsequential. He just didn't care was about a her. giant jerk. And... He didn't care. And something that I've always said, from if you step outside of the story itself and the characters, if you can read a story, if you can read words on a piece of paper, and it can make you angry at a fictional character, mm. that story has been written fantastically well. <sighs> that character has been fleshed out fantastically well. And if you can... It, even though this story was told from Soren's perspective and... Who knows, maybe at some point we'll get Nahiri's, hint, hint. It, it still, from his perspective, even he can't make himself out to be a good guy. All right. Him talking about it still makes everybody mad at him. So that's why Promises Old and New is our number seven. Number six, we're actually moving away from Shadows Over Innistrad block. I know, shocker. <laughs> to Kaladesh, uh, and we're moving to Bottled Up by James Wyatt. This story, I mean, Kaladesh in general has been doing a fantastic job. We've said that throughout. Bottled Up, in my opinion, is where it really started ramping up in quality of the story itself. The writing, the imagery, the, the simile, the metaphor, all of these things... Bottled Up was the story of Chandra and Nyssa going through Kaladesh, getting to, trying to find Pia and rescue her, and instead running into Baral with Mrs. Pashiri, Ovia Pashiri, with them, getting trapped in the deadlock trap, and by the end of the story, looking at each other, one asking the other, and then b vice versa, to planes walk away and leave and save themselves because the deadlock trap was being filled with deadly gas. Neither of them could escape no matter what they did, no matter what they used. And they looked at it at the end after the story began with the two of them not really knowing if they were friends, how they were friends, how they were going to work together in the Gatewatch. To not the, really understanding each other very well either, yes. if you recall. Yep, absolutely. By the end of the story, they looked at each other and they said, you know what, I don't really want to leave. I want to stay here with my friend. And that's... Even though it means certain death. <laughs> even though, Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Chandra was staying because she didn't want to leave Mrs. Pashiri alone. Nessa decided to stay for Mrs. Pashiri, but also for Chandra. And I think the two of them at that time really needed the other one as a close friend and gained it in that moment. And they grew together even just within that story. I mean, they did throughout the block or throughout the, 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 that set of stories, but that one in particular from start to finish, it was just phenomenal. Uh, I and loved that it. That one was definitely the one where we learned the complexities of those two characters and how in the end they are actually really, really close. Yeah. And and again, you know... We, Closer than they thought. <laughs> right. So, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. Again, that is why Bottled Up is our number six. Speaking of Kaladesh sticking with Kaladesh, we go to number five, and we go to another tugger on the heartstrings. Mm -hmm. 
with Release by Chris Letois. Once again, I hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. I said it that way in our video as well. I wasn't corrected, but Chris, if I pronounced your last name incorrectly, I do apologize because you write a mean story. <laughs> uh, it was absolutely incredible. In my opinion, where we did this combined, um, and yeah, this was this was my number one personally. I love this story. Uh, again, we're doing this overall, which is why it's not number one overall. I loved this story. You talk about words on a page, eliciting an emotional response. If you didn't get somber while reading this story, if you didn't take a minute to think while reading this story, I'd be very surprised. This story, first of all, was a reintroduction of a Johnny. And if you guys have watched our show, you know that Ajani's my boy. It's it's just, I love him. And that's fine. And I don't think, I still don't think that, I think if this were Gideon, if this were Jace, I still would feel the same way about it. Because it's not that it was Ajani. It's that it was him coping with his loss. The loss of his friend Elspeth. His feeling of responsibility towards her and the fact that even though she was there with him she still died he still couldn't help her and the helplessness that he felt and the fact that he was told by a child he was taught by a child in this story that it was okay to cry it was okay to let it out to love and to show that love that's absolutely incredible to me that story is just phenomenal. I loved it. I don't know if you have anything to say about it. I know I just gushed about it throughout this whole thing, but... There's nothing else to say about that story. It's just good. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. So, that is why release is our number five. Guess what? We're going to number four, and we're staying on Kaladesh. Our number four is Born of Ether. Now, I just talked a lot about release. I'm going to give Born of Ether to this one, <laughs> because... Take it away. I am obsessed with this story. <laughs> I love Yeheni as a character. Um, just everything about Yeheni is great. And what? I was just going to say, I completely forgot, because I'm a jerk, Born of Ether was by Allison Lures. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so yes, Yeheni is an amazing character. Yes. Please continue. Um, and I loved his interactions with Nissa. Their interactions with Nissa. Because yes. I make that mistake all the time. I'm only correcting Their her so that we can start it. With Nessa. Um, because they were just incredible. Um, and you, you know I love Nissa. <laughs> so any story that showcases Nissa and her characterization is a story I love. So this one was very high on the list for me um, for those two things. That's really it. Yeah. That's uh, all it needed. For me personally, my takeaway from that story, and I think Amy's as well, to a degree, um, that is where we saw the characterization of the art for the card Die Young. Absolutely incredible. That moment of that, that random Aetherborn. I don't remember their name at all. But that random Aetherborn was dying, and laying there dying, talking to someone else at that party, was so vivid and so well described, and it was such an aside. It had nothing to do with the story at all, except for the fact that it helped you to learn more about the Aetherborn as a race, right. and you became more invested in caring about Aetherborn in general. You learned about them and their life and their characterization as ether alive, you know, live ether, and the fact that their lives are so short and then they go back to the world again. It was that in and of itself was just incredible. And to to have that story be come up in my mind every time I see Die Young, which is a common, that's amazing to me because I don't know that there's any other common that does that for me. Where I can it's look at it and just immediately think of the story. Because it's, it's such a great art. And I mean, that was one that people were talking about. Mm -hmm. That is one piece of art 
that made an impact on this community. Yeah. You have to say that definitively. Mm -hmm. that there's no refuting that. Yes, yeah. and and it was it was a beautiful piece of art before we knew its connection to the story, and then once it had its connection to the story for people that it read it and for people that knew that much more incredible. Correct. So that is why Born of Ether as a story is our number four. Our number three, we're jumping back to uh, Eldritch Moon, so back to the Shadows Over Innistrad block, we have Stone and Blood by Kelly Diggs. Uh, this, is, this is, as I mentioned earlier, Nahiri's side of that interaction between her and Soren. Yes. It was incredible. Um, again, it was another opportunity for us to see a character, coincidentally or on purpose, a female character, having an existential experience. You got to hear her live out hundreds of years trapped inside of the Hell Vault and what that was like for her. The fact that if this were a movie, it would be a black screen. Yeah. And it was just still so vivid throughout. And it was a relatively long story, but I never wanted it to end. Because of the descriptions, because of the discussion. I wanted it to end every second. Because it was just so upsetting. <laughs> Again, emotional response is elicited by a story. It's, it's, you know, there's a reason we talk about it. So, just incredible. Um, first of all, feeling her heartbreak talking to Soren and hearing what he had to say and her realizing, like, what is happening? And then she's fighting him and she's finally showing off her strength compared to Soren's, a guy who is so much older and more powerful than she is, and she knows and it. And was her mentor. Correct. You know, so... There was no reason for her to think that she could beat him. Yeah. And so, it was, I mean, that was rough. That was really rough to read, but then the fact that he combined with Avison was able to overpower her enough to push her into the Hell Vault. She gets stuck in there. This story did an amazing job of showing you why she would want to bring an Eldrazi Titan and inflict that on another plane. Yeah. Because by the time she was done, you knew why. Because otherwise, before that, you'd be like, why would she do that? She's aware of the danger that Emrakul brings anywhere. And then you're like, oh, no, I get it. No, I get it now. Yeah, Perfect. And, and after that, you can't be like, okay, well, she was just cranky and didn't like Soren, so she, you know, wanted to get back at him with an Eldrazi. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, this was an insane wrongdoing yeah. on his part. Yep. And... She just wanted his plane to burn. Yeah. And, and you know, almost succeeded, but we'll get there. So uh, that is why Stone and Blood is our number three. Speaking of us getting there, our number two, staying on Eldritch Moon, or staying with Eldritch Moon, is Campaign of Vengeance by Ari Levitch. Because after you've read that story, you want to know whether Nahiri gets her revenge. Yes, you do. Well, guess what? <laughs> this story was incredible. Now, our, our review of it was pretty short. One, because of the situation that we were in at the time that we did the review, but also because you have to read it. Yeah, there's not a lot to say about that story other than it's a must-read. Yes. Because the descriptions of the fighting, we wouldn't do it justice and it would be bad for us to try. They're fighting in Markov Manor, but nothing makes sense. Everything's being thrown out of whack because these two are just so powerful that it's almost impossible to comprehend how they are fighting one another right. the way that they're fighting one another. It's plus, just insane. Plus there are Eldrazi being unleashed upon the fight as well. And it still, it ends with Soren. This character, who we know to be so powerful, he's older than Liliana. I think we've yes. said that Nicol Bolas and Ugin are the only planeswalkers older than Soren. Soren is one of the most powerful characters that you will read about in Magic's history, and he gets trapped in a rock 
and left there at the end of this story. And we haven't heard from him since. And we have left that plane. So that is truly showing you how powerful Nahiri now is. And the next time we see Nahiri, I question whether or not she'll be on the side of good or on the side of evil and what that'll be like for the good guys if she is on the evil side. I don't care what side she's on. She's on my side. <laughs> I'm on her side, regardless of what side it is. It was an I love Nahiri. <laughs> it was an amazing story. It was absolutely incredible. It showed us uh, the story behind a mythic in Nahiri's Wrath and the story behind a an uncommon in Campaign of Vengeance just incredible. The art on both of those cards is fantastic. So and so, and again, the descriptions of all of that stuff, if you haven't read it, you're, you're doing it wrong and you need to go yeah, and do that. Because you honestly don't understand why her cards are powerful or to what extent her cards really should be powerful. Right. <laughs> Unless you've read this story. Yeah. So, you just, you don't. Yes. And so that, among many other things, is why Campaign of Vengeance is our number two. Number two. Before we get to our number one, as promised, there were some not-so-good stories this year. We boiled it down to three, uh, just because. So, our number three for some of the worst, and I don't want to say that they were necessarily bad, like awful bad. We'll talk about which ones we think are awful bad, but these were, in our opinion, the worst three this year. Number three, from Eldritch Moon, The Promised End. Now, don't get me wrong, because maybe some of you are upset by the fact that we've said that. You're in the comments. <laughs> which is How fine. Dare you? Which is fine. Please give us your opinions, because I yes. want them. But, hear us out at the same time. The beginning of the Promised End story was fantastic. The descriptions... Go ahead, it, please. It almost went on that list of ten for me. It's true. Because Amy said to me, which was the one where Jace was talking with Emrakul? Or Amiri, I believe Playing it was. Playing chess and... Yeah, because... It was so interesting to hear those two interact, so cool. to hear Jace be able to talk to an Eldrazi Titan, to then see Jace being able to talk, walk through his own mind world and see how he felt about the other members of the Gatewatch. And to see that he was looking for Liliana, that one moment where he was looking for Liliana, he was hoping it was Liliana, and then it turns out to be Nissa, and he goes, oh, it's Nissa. It's... That's hysterical to me. That was super funny and something that stands out. Yeah. The reason that it's our number three for the worst of this year is because of the fact that it was very rushed. That beginning part of the story was so detailed and so meaty, and then they get to... Well, and then we imprison Emrakul in the moon, and then Liliana takes her oath, and then the story's over. And you sat there and you were like, wait... What? Yeah, it was kind of... You got whiplash. Yeah. Because it was such an incredible, immersive story. And then all of a sudden, it turned into something completely different. And I don't know if you've noticed from listening to our list, but Shadows Over Innistrad and Eldritch Moon were pretty darn good. Yeah. We've talked about them a lot. And this was how the block, the entire block, ended. And sure, it ended on a bit of a cliffhanger with... Tamio saying, she made me do it. You know, she, she being Emrakul, right. made me imprison her in the moon. And that leaves a lot of questions as to why and when will she get free. And, and that's amazing. And what's she going to do? But it was very rushed to get to that point. And I don't know whether that was because of their release schedule for stories or what the case may be. But because of that and because of the lost potential... Yes. That could have been, because that story rolled so well, and it was going so well, and then it just tanked three quarters of the way through, right at the end. And that was a damn shame, in my opinion. They, they just didn't give it the time that it deserved right. at the end for those parts of the story. That's so, the only reason why it's on that Correct, list. correct. And I was just going to say, and for that reason, that's why it's our number three 
our number, our third worst. Now, and again, that's not because of the topic. That's because of it being rushed. At the end. Yes. Because the beginning part was not rushed. Yes. It was very detailed and very great. Now, so that we can be hypocritical, on the other side of that, our number two worst story is also from Eldritch Moon, and it is Saint Traft and the Flight of Nightmares. This story was long. <laughs> Also, and I know that a lot of people have said this, I am one of those people, there are some people who disagree. My favorite art from Eldritch Moon was Brazella. It was an amazing piece of art. You took two very popular characters from the story, melded them together, and turned them into this beautiful but disgusting monstrosity. It's, I think, your least favorite art. Correctly. Yes, but I think Bruna is definitely one of my favorites. Yes. And art wise. Right. And Gisela is an amazing they're both amazing yes, cards. Gisela is also very nice. Yes. But I think Bruna is pretty high up there in in the arts that I just love. Right. And I love the Brazella art. Brazella was a very imposing figure in this story. First of all, it took us half the or story at least to... it should have been. Yes. Well, I was going to say, it took us half the story to get to her in the first place. Yeah. And then by the end of that story, she's dead. Despite the fact that she is the most powerful melded card, where you took two super powerful angels that had been influenced by an alien Eldrazi titan, and you fuse them together into this disgusting monstrosity, and then you kill it off after, like, Ten paragraphs, but at the same time, yeah, it was way too fast. It was way too fast, and yet that story itself was so long yes. because they had to get to the fight first, and then when they were in the fight, they were you were like, oh my god! It, it wasn't even like we we discussed um, uh, Rashmi already, where it was, will they win? You know, will they get it done in time? Will they not? In this story, you didn't even have time to think like, oh, will they win or will Brazella kill Thalia? It was just get it over with already. This is the longest story. And and I loved Thalia up until this story. Mm -hmm. And then come this story, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, well, that was lackluster. Yeah. You spent all this time building up saying how incredible Thalia was. And then... I mean, you proved it because she beat Brazella in like five seconds. Well, with right. The help and of it was with Sigarda's help. Sigarda. It was with Sigarda's help, but still, uh, I think to bring Thalia, a main character, in and have her fight really for the first time against at least the Eldrazi. I mean, you saw her fight against some of the Abyssinian priests, but that was a, kind of a different story. But you bring Thalia in and you have her fight and you have her take up the Spear of Abyssin which should be a huge moment. Yeah. And you bring in Sigarda, who we hadn't seen in Shadows of Our Innistrad, despite that she was a card in that set. We and wait. fans had been thirsty to see her. Yes, and we see her in Eldritch Moon, finally. And the two of them fight, and they're inches from losing, and then they finally get a chance to fight back, and it's against Brazella, but... It took half the story to get to the beginning of that fight because they were just walking down the road and it just took yeah, such a was, long there was time. Way too much time spent on insignificant things. Yes. And nowhere near enough time spent on significant things. Yeah. And so honestly that's the only reason why it's on this yeah. list. If those stories had been split in half, maybe the Brazella fight would have been in our top ten. Because yeah. it was cool. Um, if they it had was given fast. it a legitimate chance, it yeah. could have been a great story. Yeah. But the they they took their sweet time getting to the fight and then rushed through the fight with what should have been the coolest monster right. next because to Emrakul. Cool. Because it's so... It doesn't work. I mean, yeah. the, the cards... The one card, when it's actually one card, is incredible. It's insane. Yeah. And the mechanics of that card being so good d does not meld in any way with... <laughs> <laughs> meld. 
Go on. <laughs> with with the story and how simple and fast and boringly she was defeated. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was definitely unfortunate in the way that it was done. Yes. Again, that is why it is our number two worst story. Again, if you have watched our series, this will not surprise you. Yes. Our number one worst story of the year. As I promised, we are we back talk about it all the time. <laughs> we are back to conspiracy take the crown with Leovold's dossiers. Now, I will say, a positive thing about our number one worst story of the year is that it was relatively funny. My problem with this story is it was the way that they ended Conspiracy Take the Crown. They had three stories. They had three stories leading up to this one. This one seemed to be a culmination of, and, and really just a, a recapping of what happened in the previous three stories, and it seemed like the perfect tie-in to lead into a huge fight right at the end in, in a, another story. And then you come back next week, and guess what? Nothing to be there heard weren't of. any. Gone. And so for that reason, if I could say that our number one worst story was the one that didn't happen following this one, I would, but because I can't, my number one, our number one, worst story of 2016 is Leobold's dossiers, dossiers because why? Why was because this the ending of that story? Useless. Ugh. Just useless. And it really only because it was so disappointing. It was so disappointing that that was such an interesting tie-in and I was so ready and then because it was nothing, because it was the end, when we get to it, we were just furious. Oh my god, it was absolutely the worst. So, <laughs> once again, Leovold's Dossiers is our number one worst story of the year 2016. Speaking of the year 2016 and number ones, what you've been waiting for, our number one best story of the year, should surprise none of you loyal viewers, because again, yes. we talk about this all the time. And but even our, if you're not a, lo a loyal viewer, but you've read all these stories... There's one that we haven't yeah. mentioned yet, and hopefully you know which one it is. <sighs> From Shadows Over Innistrad, by an author that we have not mentioned yet on this list, Doug Beyer, we have I Am yeah. Addison. This story is another one. I mean, we mentioned this with number two, and I'm going to mention it again. I will not do this story justice, and so I'm going to... I will quickly summarize it, but I am not going to try to give you the descriptions and the verbiage that was used to describe Avison's mindset right before she is killed by her own creator. It's not worth it, because you need to read the story for yes. yourself. Please read this story. If you have read no stories and you haven't been listening to me in all of these episodes of Jar and you just keep watching episodes of Jar without reading any stories or you're not even watching Jar and just you stumbled upon this video and whatever, mm -hmm. please read this story. Yeah. Even if you've never played Magic, even if you don't know anything about the Magic stories, yeah. if you can find it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can find we'll it. We'll have the link. Yeah, well, we won't have the link, but go to Wizard's website. Right, go to Wizard's website. Do it, you'll find and it. And read I Am Avison, it because was... it is an incredible story for anyone to read. It's definitely worth your time, and Whether honestly... you know the characters or not. Honestly, I genuinely want to know if there's anyone out there watching this video who didn't like I Am Avison. I want to know. I yes. want to know, not because I want to argue you with really you didn't, and tell you that you're leave wrong. That in the comments. Yeah, I want to hear about it. I want to hear why, because... For us, it was just so obviously amazing. We st we when that story was over, we sat back and just looked at each other, and just wait. I mean, we had to go we film like, a review of it, but oh. it was just so good. We were like, "What? What do we say?" Yeah, it was it was a culmination of an incredible character. Sure, we knew leading up to it that she was going to die doesn't matter. They did matter. an incredible because job. Because you were still on the edge of your seat the entire time. Yes, because she was crazy and yet you heard it from her perspective. You got to hear her crazy rantings 
and ravings and and hear why she was doing these right. things. These justifications that she was giving for things. Yeah. yeah, and and the and you you know what? Maybe maybe you cared about Soren a little bit because you got to hear Soren talking to his creation and trying to figure out why she's doing what she's doing and then coming to the realization that there's no other solution except to end her. And it was just amazing. It was not as tearfully emotional as release, like we were talking about, but regardless, I mean, again, it, talk about emotional investment. Right. This story was absolutely incredible. It is worth, very thought provoking. It is worth your time. Go watch, read it. You can watch our review of it. That'll be that'll have been annotated at the top of a card. But yeah, I recommend that you go read the story. If you don't watch our review of it, fine. I don't really care. You need to go read the story. You yes. need to understand yeah, why okay. that amazing card art from Anguished on Making. Why that was so amazing, and it worked so well in the story. It's definitely worth your time. I am Avison is our number one. <laughs> it's just it's just amazing. Props to Doug Byer, props to the entire Magic Story team. Every name that we mentioned on any of our stories today, any name that we didn't mention on any of our stories today, they've done a fantastic job with these stories. Yes. And from what we've seen as a trend, they're only getting better. And so I'm looking forward to continuing our JAR series in 2017. We have a video coming out on this channel on Monday where we talk to all of you about this channel from 2016 leading into 2017. We definitely encourage you to subscribe down below. Yes. You will find out when that video comes out, of course, depending on when you're watching this one. But we said it last week and we were premature because, again, Wizards made me a liar. But I'll say it again. I hope that all of you have had and are still having a very happy holiday season here in 2016 you and your families and your friends. We hope that you have a very happy and a healthy 2017. We hope that you will stick around with us throughout 2017. To show off your hashtag more those pride. I might have even forgotten to say it. Thank you, Amy. You're <laughs> We've shown off our hashtag more those pride all year. We hope that you guys have been showing it off with us. We thank you whether this is the first jar that you've watched or whether you've watched them all the way through from episode one. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you, Thank so, you much. so much. We will definitely, as I said, be back in 2017. That's not a question. Give us your feedback of this video of our top 10. What did you think? Did we miss anything? Did you love I Am Avison? Was that your number one or are we way off? Yeah. Please let us know. Let us know what you think. If if there's anyone out there who Leobold's dossiers is your favorite story, <laughs> let us know down yes, below. Please explain yourself. Definitely. Because I have to know. <laughs> definitely. And again. There are no wrong answers. There are no wrong opinions, in our opinion. You can love whatever you want. If Leovold's Dossiers is your favorite story, please let us know why. Please yes, don't be afraid. tell us why, because I want to... Genuinely. I, I genuinely want to know that. Yes. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Again, let us know what you thought of the video in general down in the comment section below. You can also check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Share this video with your friends. See if they have a specific top 10. If they agree with us, disagree. Maybe you guys can compare between the two of you, the group of you, whatever. For the last jar of 2016, I've been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, guys, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.